a very good morning to all of you. Welcome to this introductory class on Indian polity by Eden IS. Today we'll understand four things primarily. First, what is a constitution? Second, the theory of separation of powers. Third, the doctrine of checks and balances. And then fourth, a kind of uh, comparison between constitutional supremacy and parliamentary sovereignty. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So what is a constitution? What is a constitution? Simply put, the constitution is the basic fundamental law according to which the country will be governed. It means that all the executive actions, executive actions means actions of government of India or government of any state. Second, legislative actions, it means laws made by the parliament as well as the laws made by other state legislature and the actions of the judiciary. It means the Supreme Court, High Court and other lower organs of judiciary. They all be in conformity with the provisions of the constitution. What do you understand by this provisions of the constitution? The provisions of the constitutions are its articles, schedules, etc. It means no executive action, it means action by the prime minister or his council of ministers or the governor or the president should violate any of the articles which is enshrined in the constitution or the schedules enshrined in the constitution or any other provision of the constitution. Similarly, no law should be made which is against the provisions of the constitution and if the executive or the legislature makes the executive takes any action or the legislature makes any laws which violates the provisions of the constitution then such a action by the legislative uh, such an action by the executive and such a law by the legislature shall be declared unconstitutional and void by the judiciary it means the judiciary has been made a kind of protector of the constitution it is also the final interpreter of the constitution as far as India is concerned. But leave all of that. Let us first understand that what is the constitution. A constitution is a basic fundamental law as per which the country is governed. It means as per which executive actions are taken, laws are made and judicial pronouncements are done. So that is a constitution. Now constitution is actually a legal document. It means it is also a kind of law like any other law but there is a difference between constitutional law and ordinary law. Now a constitutional law, constitutional law enjoys a kind of supremacy over other laws. Like for example, that there is a law which says that if I steal, there would be imprisonment. Do you understand this? And this law has been made by the parliament. Suppose the parliament has made a law, simply it says, So if you steal, there would be imprisonment. Now this becomes an ordinary law. It means it is made by the parliament. Constitution is also a law. Like it gives you a right. For example, this law gives you a right that if your commodity is stolen, you can file a case that the person has violated a law of the land and that law is an ordinary law. Similarly, constitution also gives you some rights. For example, fundamental rights. And if anyone violates these rights, then also you can enforce them in a court. But 
What is the difference then between this law, it means an ordinary law and a constitutional law? The difference is that this constitution enjoys special legal sanctity. It means it is very pure. Such a law which is made by the parliament cannot violate the constitutional law. But a constitutional law should not always conform to ordinary laws. It means all laws are derived from the constitution and not the constitution as such. Do you understand that? So, what is a constitution? Constitution is the basic fundamental law as per which the country is governed and it enjoys a special legal sanctity whereas other laws enjoy only legal sanctity. So, do you understand that? So, constitution is that basic fundamental form of law which allows that how the country would be governed. So, we understand what is a constitution. Without a constitution, there would be executive tyranny as well as legislative tyranny. Tyranny means atyachar. So, if you want the country to be governed by law, you need a constitution. If this constitution is created by the parliament, it becomes an ordinary law. Whereas, if this constitution is created by a super parliament, it becomes a supreme law. Like for example, in England, it is the parliament that has created the constitution. So, their constitution is an ordinary law, whereas in India, it is not the parliament that has created the constitution, but it is the constituent assembly that has created the constitution. And hence, it is a kind of super parliament, hence the constitution for us becomes a supreme law. In England, it is the parliament which has given the constitution, but in India, it is the constitution which has given the parliament. And the constitution was created by the constituent assembly, which is a kind of super parliament. So, in India, there is a kind of constitutional supremacy, which is absent there in Britain. So, constitution, we understand, is the basic fundamental law as per which a country is governed. It enjoys special legal sanctity and is often created by a super parliament. Constitution is required to run the country. It is the basic fundamental law as per which the country is governed. No other law should violate any of the provisions of the constitution. And if a law is made in contravention to the provisions of the constitution, such a law would be unconstitutional and void. Now, when I say the country would be governed in accordance with the provisions of the constitution, I mean that all the executive actions that are taken all the legislative actions that are taken and all the judicial pronouncements that are made must be in conformity with the constitution. So, we understand what is a constitution. Let us go to our second topic that is theory of separation of powers. there are mainly three kinds of powers of any government. Now, these powers are executive powers, legislative powers and judicial powers. Executive powers simply means the powers which is exercised by the officials of the government. Legislative powers means the power which is exercised by the parliament 
and judicial powers obviously you understand is the powers which is exercised by the supreme court high court and other courts <coughs> this theory of separation of powers was given by the french philosopher montesquieu and he says that all powers of the government must not be concentrated in one organ but they should be separated into different organs to understand this more properly let's go to a society where there is a supreme king or a queen it means a monarch now his order is the supreme order so he has all the absolute executive powers similarly his word is the law whatever the king says becomes law so he has the extreme or supreme legislative powers and he is the fountain of justice when there is a dispute between anyone or any of the subjects in the kingdom they go to the king to seek justice so all the powers of government be it executive powers legislative powers or judicial powers are vested in the king or in the monarch so it is the king or the monarch who has all powers of governance and there is no separation of powers it means all powers combined in one and invested in one person what is theory of separation of powers it says just the opposite of this it means that the job of legislature would be to make laws the job of executive would be to implement the, those laws or you can say execute the laws whereas the job of the judiciary would be to test the laws and executive functions now try to understand this it means here in this society all powers executive legislature and judicial powers were invested in the king but here in theory of separation of powers these powers of governance or these power of government are separated from each other and invested into different organs of the government for example the executive powers are vested with the government of india or the government of any state which is headed by the president of india and if it's a state government it would be headed by the governor legislative powers are invested in the parliament if it is the case of a union and in the legislative assemblies if it is the part of a state and judicial powers are invested in the supreme court high court and other lower courts the job of the legislature it means parliament and the state legislative assemblies is to make laws and obviously you understand that such laws must be in conformity with the constitution it means they should not violate any basic provisions of the constitution the job of executive is to execute those laws or all actions that are taken by the executive must be in conformity with those laws for example a law is made by the parliament and the law is the law of gst gst par ek law ban gaya clear now this law the gst law is made by the legislature and now if taxes are taken by implementing the gst law who would implement it it would be the tax officials the indirect tax official so they are part of the executive and they are doing it obviously under the direction of the ministries for example the ministry of finance so taxes cannot be taken without an authority of law it means suppose there is no law on gst and if i still try to take gst from the people the courts will come in and the courts would declare such an executive action such an executive action as unconstitutional and void because there is no legal backing to that action do you understand this so the job of legislature is to make laws and the job of executive is to execute those laws and 
if an action is taken by the executive without a legal backing such an action would be invalidated by the judiciary now suppose a law has been made and suppose the law is gst which takes away your freedom to speak or the freedom to express now this is a fundamental right it means remember i told you that the constitution has given you some rights similarly ordinary laws can also give you some rights but these rights should not violate these rights so suppose that a gst law is made and that law takes away from you your freedom of speech and expression then such a law is violating the constitution because it is taking away from you your fundamental right to speak and to express yourself so such a law would also be invalidated by the courts so do you understand this the job of executive is to execute the laws the job of legislature is to make the laws and the job of judiciary is to test the laws and the executive actions that whether they are in conformity with the constitution or not and if the judicial or the judiciary finds that they are not in conformity or they are violating some basic provision of the constitution then such laws or such actions would be declared as unconstitutional and void it means they would be meaningless because they are violating the constitution and the country is governed as per the constitution constitution has special legal sanctity sanctity matlab pavitrata whereas such ordinary laws have only legal sanctity they have no special legal sanctity it means these laws cannot violate the provisions of the constitution what are the provisions of the constitution the articles the schedules the parts etc and it is clearly violating one article which is article 19 clause 1 sub clause a it means the freedom to speak and to express yourself it means all citizens of india has this freedom but if suppose the parliament makes a law on gst in that law it takes away from you your freedom to speak and express now don't get confused that the gst does not takes away that right from you i am just hypothetically presenting a situation so that you can understand the limitation of legislative powers now suppose a law has been made by the legislature which takes away the freedom to speak and express such a law would be invalidated by the court this is the theory of separation of powers it means the powers of governance which are executive legislative and judiciary are not invested in one authority or person but they are invested in different authorities or different persons for example here the executive powers are invested in the government the legislative powers are inv invested in the parliament and the judicial powers are invested in the courts clear that is the theory of separation of powers and this was given by the french political philosopher montesquieu now <coughs> this theory of separation of powers comes with a natural appendage and what is that natural appendage it is the doctrine of checks and balances what is this doctrine of checks and balances it means i understand the job of legislature is to make laws the job of executive is to execute the laws which laws the laws which are made by the legislature and the job of judiciary is to test the laws and test the laws and the testing is done with respect to constitution if the laws or the executive actions violate the constitution then the judiciary declares such action or such laws as unconstitutional and void it means they have no legal competence left try to understand this what is this doctrine of checks and balances it means that every organ of the government exercises some control over the other organ it means the legislature checks the executive controls the executive the executive controls the legislature to some extent 
the executive controls the judiciary the judiciary controls the executive to some extent and so so is the legislature and the judiciary it means that they do not function under each other's control but they are definitely checked whenever this theory of separation of powers or the balance of power is to be established it means for example see the executive appoints the judges of the courts so there's a kind of control that the executive has at least in the appointment of the judges in the judiciary similarly the judges can be impeached only in the parliament so the parliament or the legislature has a control of removal of judges so judges are appointed by the executive they are removed by the legislature similarly you see that the judiciary can give some directions to the executive as well as the legislature this is nothing but judicial activism similarly you see that the executive can decide that when the parliament is dissolved for example like the government of india or the government of the day loses a vote in the parliament and suppose it's a no confidence motion and the government lost it so the government can just ask the president to dissolve the parliament or they dissolve the lower house of the parliament lok sabha so it's a kind of control this is the doctrine of checks and balances where one organ of the government checks the other organ to maintain a balance of power which is promised under the theory of separation of powers now this theory of separation of powers and the doctrine of checks and balances are to be found in the united states of america's constitution or the us constitution you find that usa has a judiciary which is headed by the us supreme court usa has an executive which is headed by the us president and the us congress which is their legislative bill wing clear so in usa you have the judiciary which is headed by the supreme court you have the executive which is headed by the president and you have the us legislature which is known as the congress congress comprises of two houses first is the house of representatives and the us senate this is the upper house and this is the lower house very similar to your lok sabha and rajya sabha so in usa we have a true separation of powers it means all organs of the government are separated from each other and all of them have their assigned jobs like the president executes the judiciary tests and the congress makes laws whereas in india if you see that this true separation of power is not followed it means that those who are in the government has nothing to do with the legislature or the judiciary it means a minister of say the trump administration is not a member of the us congress he neither sits in the house of representatives nor in the senate nor is he a member of the us judiciary the supreme court high court or any other court it means that once you are into the executive you have no business with the legislature or with the judiciary similarly if you see the judges of the supreme court you will find that the judges of the supreme court of america are not part of the government they are also not part of the legislature but they are part of the judiciary and are separated from the executive and the legislature similarly if you are a member of the us senate it which is the upper house then you do not become a part of the executive it means you have no function under the president and you have no function under the judiciary there is a clear separation of powers whereas in india you see that <coughs> you have the judiciary in india it means the judges of the supreme court judges of the high court and judges of lower courts and you will find one thing that these judges it means jo judge hai supreme court mein ya high court mein wo government ka part nahi hai na hi wo parliament ka part hai it means like suppose you have the indian judiciary you have the indian parliament and you have the government of india 
this becomes your executive this is your legislature and this is your judiciary so the judges of the supreme court high court and other lower courts are not part of the parliament you understand that they are also not part of the government so there is separation of powers at least from the judicial standpoint but here is the difference between the us constitution and the indian constitution here the government is drawn from the parliament it means that all the ministers you think of the prime minister or any other minister in the government of india they are taken from the parliament it means they are either a member of the lok sabha or a part of the rajya sabha for example think of mr narendra modi he is a member of the lok sabha whereas you think of mr arun jetli he becomes a member of the rajya sabha so all the ministers including the prime minister or any other ministers are taken from the parliament this is your parliament the lok sabha and the rajya sabha this makes up your parliament so in india can i say thus that if this is the legislature the executive is a subset of the legislature and is taken from the legislature whereas you see that donald trump is not a member of the us congress nor his ministers are members of the us congress so here you see that india has theory of separation of powers only in a partial sense what do i mean by that it means that you have judiciary which is separated from the executive and the legislature but the executive is not separated from the legislature all the ministers of the union are taken from the union parliament same is the case in state government as well it means that be it the chief minister or any other minister of a state they would be taken out of the state legislative assembly so in india there is partial separation of powers it means that judiciary is separated from the legislature and the executive but the executive and legislature are not completely separated in fact executive is a subset of the legislature this form of government is known as parliamentary form of government why we are calling it parliamentary form of government because it is the parliament see the legislature is the parliament so the parliament is giving you the government the government is nothing but executive so the executive is given by the parliament hence it becomes parliamentary form of government but here the arrangement is known as presidential form of government it means that the president is the head of the government and the president is giving you the government whereas here it is the parliament that is giving you the government again i am repeating that the us president is not a member of the us congress nor is he a part of the judiciary any ministers do not sit in any of the houses of the us congress but not the case in india in india all ministers must be a member of the parliament either lok sabha or rajya sabha in fact if you are not a member of the lok sabha or rajya sabha you cannot become a minister or even if you become a minister you cannot continue for more than 6 months within which you have to become a member of either house of the parliament that is the theory of separation of powers as far as india is concerned it means india has a partial separation of power the judiciary is completely separated but the legislature and executive has not separated because india has opted for a parliamentary form of government where the parliament gives you the government it means the executive becomes a subset of the legislature whereas america has presidential form of government this type of government is borrowed from britain britain also have the same arrangement in britain also you have the english judiciary you have the english parliament now the english parliament comprises of two houses first is the house of commons which is the lower house and second is the house of lords which is the upper house very similar to the indian lok sabha and rajya sabha lok sabha is the lower house rajya sabha is the upper house here you have the house of commons which is the lower house and the house of lords which is the upper house so this becomes your english parliament and then you have 
English executive. English executive is nothing but the council of ministers which is headed by the English prime minister or the British PM. The British PM and all his ministers have to be members of the house of common or the house of lords. Do you understand this? So, in England also the executive is given by the parliament or England also have more or less this arrangement. It means the judiciary is separated completely but not the executive from the legislature because England like India or the otherwise India like England has adopted a parliamentary form of government where the parliament gives you government whereas here it is the president that gives you the government that is presidential form of government. This was your theory of separation of powers. Now let us move to the last topic of the day that is constitutional supremacy versus parliamentary sovereignty. To understand this, let us move to these two countries. First, we will go to England and then we will move to United States of America. But let us first understand England and let us go to this 12th century. Now 12th century England was a country which was governed by an autocratic monarch. Now, what do you understand by this autocratic monarch? Autocratic monarch was a supreme king and everything was invested in him. His word was the last word. So, even if the king imposes a tax on you, no one can challenge it. You have to give that tax to the king because the king was supreme. That was the England of 12th century. Now, as times passed by, the king became more and more autocratic, totalitarian. It means imposed taxes, waged wars and did whatever he wanted. It means the purse of England or jo khazana tha England ka, the purse of England was the king's purse. It means it was his personal purse and he would take out money from it whenever he wants or he would give money to it whenever he wants. It means putting money into the purse and withdrawal from the purse was a prerogative of the king. It means it was a kind of means jo king ne soch liya wo wo karega. Koi kuch nahi kar sakta is. This is what was England in the 12th century. Now the king became more and more cruel with time and he imposed a lot of taxes and made the people suffer a lot. So there was a war between the people and the king and the people won the war and as the people won the war they replaced this system and they declared that the king should not act against the wishes of the people rather the king should act as per the wishes of the people and the wishes of the people would be reflected by a parliament. Now what would be a parliament? Now a parliament would be so there are people you can understand and there is the king. Prior to this war between the people and the king it was the king who would declare how the people would eat, how they would live what money they would earn and how much they would pay as taxes. The king would also declare war whenever he wants, he would conclude peace whenever he would want, he would build whatever he would want and no one will ever question him. Do you understand this? But after this war when the people won against the king, they decided that the king should not act as per his whims and fancies. You will act as per the wishes of the people. Now whatever the people would decide you have to work in accordance with this and 
people's decision would be reflected by a parliament now what is a parliament a parliament will be comprising of people's representatives it means those who would come out from the people as such for example say if there are 10 lakh people maybe a hundred would be chosen from them as representatives of those people who would be elected by the people and these representatives would gather in the form of a legislature which would be known as parliament now this parliament would give the ministers to the king so you have the parliament which would give the ministers because england has not actual separation of powers it means the executive and the legislature are not totally separated from each other so the parliament a part of parliament becomes the ministers and these ministers would aid and advise the king these ministers would aid and advise the king and the king should act in accordance with the aid and advice the king's actions should be guided by the aid and advice of the ministers who would be responsible to the parliament and the parliament would be responsible to the people so the king will act in accordance with the wishes of the people do you understand that so in 12th century england the king became autocratic monarch and thus there was a war between people and king the people won it and the people tried to curb the executive tyranny because king was the executive the executive tyranny with the help of a parliament and they declared that no actions can be taken by the king without the aid and advice of the ministers and the a and the ministers should act in accordance with law that law would be made by the parliament the ministers would be responsible to the parliament and the parliament would be responsible to the people in this way the people can control the actions of the king this is known as democracy so democracy was established in england do you understand this and monarchy was replaced it means democracy simply means popular sovereignty or supreme power by the people and the people express that supreme power with the help of a parliament and the parliament gave the ministers ministers would advise the king now in england parliament is supreme it is the parliament then which created the constitution and the constitution created the executive and the judiciary it means it is the british parliament because the parliament was a result of the struggles that the people had to wage against the king the people won that struggle and they tried to control the king with the help of a parliament now the parliament made a constitution and declared that the executive and the judiciary must function in accordance with the constitution this is known as parliamentary sovereignty or supremeness of the parliament that exists in britain because in the course of struggle with the king or against this autocratic monarchy they found parliament as the answer and no one in britain would ever think of putting any curb over the parliament because the parliament is supreme or the parliament is sovereign sovereign means it is independent and it is not under the control of any one not even the constitution because the parliament has given the constitution and the constitution has created executive and judicial action so if the parliament makes a law which is violating the constitution the courts cannot declare in england such a law as unconstitutional as void because the constitution is under the parliament and not the other way around it is not the constitution that is under uh, it is not the parliament that is under the constitution but it is the constitution that is under the parliament because parliament was the ultimate result of the struggle of the people of england so no one in england would ever think of putting any curbs over the parliament 
you understand this this is known as parliamentary sovereignty now let us go to this continent now you know that united states of america was ruled by britain once so the british parliament it means this parliament which was found as a hope by the people of england and was found as an instrument to tame the king so that he must behave properly and as per the wishes of the people the same parliament the british parliament would make laws and such laws would be used by the british officials to govern the people of united states of america now the parliament in britain would never make a law which is unjust it means it will never make a law which exploits the people because the people have created the parliament so the parliament would always be following the wishes of the people but here in this case this parliament was not created by the american people but this parliament was created by the people in britain so it has no responsibility for the people of america so what did this parliament did it made laws that exploited the people of america for example they would take taxes from the people of america without giving them any representation in the parliament it means the people said that these taxes are unjust and we want some representation in the british parliament where we can claim that do not take taxes from us because these taxes are unjust but the britain denied to give americans such a representation in the british parliament and thus there ensured a war between the britain great britain and the united states of america which is known as the american war of independence and there was this declaration of independence by the american colonies now the declaration of independence by the american colonies means that they declared that we are a free nation and we will not follow the laws made by britain and they gave a cry that no taxation without representation so the american people have a altogether different experience of the parliament the british people found hope in parliament and parliament never did anything wrong to the british people but in america the same parliament inflicted a lot of damage on the american people so the american people once they won the war against britain and declared themselves a free nation decided that we cannot have a system where the parliament is supreme because it is very possible that at some time some people would man that parliament and that parliament would make laws which are unjust and tyrannical in nature which may exploit the people very similarly like a king what the king was doing to the people of england by taking taxes without giving them any <coughs> space to speak anything the same thing was done by the british parliament as far as america was concerned here the king was laying taxes without people's wishes here the parliament was laying taxes without people's wishes here they found to tame the king they found that parliament is the answer but they wanted something much more superior to tame the parliament as well because they have a very bad experience of the parliament so america adopted the system of constitutional supremacy after independence all the states of america or the colonies of america as they were known then they joined hands and they made a constitution and declared that that constitution would be supreme in england it is the parliament that is supreme but in america it is the constitution that was declared as supreme so all wings of the government be it the parliament it means the legislative wing be it the executive or be it the judiciary all would be under the constitution and under the control of the constitution they would be subservient to the constitution and nothing would override the constitution so if a law is made by the american congress which is the american legislature remember it has two houses the house of representatives and the senate so if the american congress makes a law which violates the constitution the american supreme court will strike down such law 
if the executive or the American president takes an action which is against the Constitution, the Supreme Court of America would strike down such action. So the judiciary becomes the protector and the interpreter of the Constitution. Judiciary also becomes the guardian of the Constitution because it is the judiciary that would ensure that the legislative actions and the executive actions are in conformity with the provisions of the Constitution. But that will not happen ever in Britain. In Britain, suppose the parliament makes a law which violates the constitution. We have seen that the judiciary cannot do anything. Suppose executive takes an action which violates the constitution. The judiciary can invalidate such action because the constitution has given that power to the judiciary. But the constitution itself was created by the parliament. So judiciary is very powerful. The court of England is very powerful against the English executive but it is helpless before the English parliament because in Britain you have parliamentary sovereignty. It means supremeness of the parliament whereas in America you have constitutional supremacy. The courts of uh, America have equal power both against the legislature as well as the executive. If they violate any of the provision of the constitution, the judiciary would declare such an action by as unconstitutional and void because it is the constitution that is supreme whereas there it is the parliament that is supreme. India also has a similar experience. It is this same British parliament that made laws for India. Remember the Indian Councils Act 1909, Government of India Act 1919, Government of India Act 1935, the Charter Acts and all those kind of acts. It means these acts were laws or they were constitutions made by the British Parliament. But since this British Parliament was functioning not as per the wishes of the people of India, but as per the wishes of people of England, the same laws, the same Parliament which was very friendly to the British people did or inflicted untold damage on the Indians. So the experience of the American people and the Indian people is very similar. It means both of them have suffered at the hands of a parliament. So both of them have adopted a system which is known as constitutional supremacy. It is not the parliament that has created the constitution in India or in US, but it is the constitution that has created the parliament. And who created the constitution? It is a super parliament or a constituent assembly that has created the constitution. So that is the uh, the concept of parliamentary sovereignty versus constitutional supremacy. In India and USA, you have constitutional supremacy. It means the constitution is supreme and all other organs of the government are subservient to it. Whereas in Britain, you have a system where the parliament is supreme and everything including the constitution itself is subservient to the parliament. So that is all we will have for the day. So today we learned four things. First, what is constitution? Constitution is the basic law as per which the country is governed. Then we understood what is theory of separation of powers. It was given by French scholar Montesquieu, which means that all the organs of the government are separated from each other. The job of the executive is to execute laws. The job of legislature is to make laws and the job of judiciary is to test laws. We also understood the doctrine of checks and balances. It means one organ of the government checks the other organ so that they maintain the balance. Clear? Like the judiciary, the judges are appointed by the executive and the judges are removed by the parliament. Similarly, the executive or the government can initiate legislation in the parliament. The parliament will uh, make the government answerable. So there is some sort of checks and finally we understood the difference between parliamentary sovereignty and constitutional supremacy. In Britain we have parliamentary sovereignty that is the parliament has created everything including the constitution. So everything is under the parliament and the parliament is supreme whereas in USA and in India we have constitutional supremacy. It means the constitution has created everything including the parliament. That's all from me. Thank you very much.